Hello, welcome to Spot Hidden, the show where we play tabletop role-playing games, normally Call of Cthulhu, but tonight we are playing Dragon Bane. How is everybody feeling tonight? Hello, people. Fantastic. Woo. Old. Yep. Y you look old, Hudson. You look old. Thank you. You got a young <laughs> spirit, Hudson. I try. Yeah. Young at heart. Young at heart. Young at heart. Yeah, that's it. Um, uh, yeah, well, hey, welcome, welcome to our table. We're gonna be playing this game, Dragon Bane. We are playing, um, a one-shot from the Quick Start Rules. This is a game, um, or an edition of a game that was recently kickstarted. I believe there is a beta PDF now where they're doing, like, sort of, like, you know, play tests of, like, the rules that'll be coming out soon. But this game has history. This is the, like, the, the grandfather of Swedish role-playing games, going all the way back to the days when it came out of um, Magic World by Chaosium. So it has its roots in the basic role-playing game system. Now, in this new edition, it's its own thing, its own sort of um, amalgam of just of goodness and, and, and just awesome rules. So we're going to try it out here, live, for you, Ooh. for your viewing pleasure. Um, first off, yes, indeed. First off, my name is... London, hi. Oh, yes, and I just saw in the, in the uh, just was reminded, I should say the publisher's name. Um, mm. Free League. Um, Free League is publishing this game, so keep an eye out for it. Um, but hey, uh, you know, let them know if, if, if you like what, they, what you see. Buy the game when it comes out. Hey, Hell yeah. yeah. But yes, my name is London. Um, I will be your game master for this evening, leading you through the lands of the Misty Vale. Uh, thanks for joining. Let's go around the table. Who do we have? Let's start right here and go kind of clockwise around. Uh, hey everybody, I'm uh, Hudson. You can, of course, uh, follow me at huddy.hubs. And uh, of course, tonight I'm playing Aedon, uh, the human wizard. I don't know if you could tell by the way I'm dressed, but yeah, I'm playing a human wizard. I had no clue. Yeah. Actually, no, I'm, I'm Jerry Garcia. Also really against the uh, the Vietnam War, you are. Yes, yes. He, uh, not, not for that stuff, you know. And introducing <laughs> the Grateful Dead. Peace. <laughs> sides of bands everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Mm. Sorry, I forgot we were going clockwise, and I forget forgot what clockwise meant. That points to <laughs> me, Matthew. That's my name, and I'm excited to be part of a game that I have yet to play, and I'm very excited to play it because London has been hyping this up, um, uh -huh. and I get why going over the rules, going over the character. Macander of Half Bay, who is a mallard, <clears throat> um, which is very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> what? It's, you're playing a duck. You're yeah, Donald Duck. Uh, Donald E. Duck. <laughs> Donald E. <laughs> e. Duck. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a great Richard Nixon. Um, quite, 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 quite. Next up, uh, let's go to Price. Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Stevenson. Uh, you can. I'm kidding. All right, my name. <laughs> You got, you look him with a haircut. You got a beard, nice beard. Yeah, exactly. Hi everybody. I'm Bryce. Go. Now with a new haircut. Um, and I'll be tonight playing Baston Bloodjaw, <laughs> and he is a wolfkin warrior. As you can see, this is my character's younger self behind me. Oh. Yeah, I used How to be precious. adorable, but now I'm ready to fuck shit up. He had three so. kills by the time that picture was taken. Just That's exactly that, that. That was after kill number three, like directly. <laughs> and, and two of them were fully grown bears. Exactly. <laughs> and, and one of them was a Scooby snack. And let me tell you, they tasted just right. Mm. Mm. Uh, oh, Goldilocks wow. reference. Wow. That was a deep cut. Last Thank but you. certainly not least, the legend themselves. Carly. Hello. Hello. I'm Carly. I'm going to be playing good old Orla Moonsilver tonight, the elf hunter. Very on-brand character for me, so. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Table, for introducing yourselves. I believe it's time to dive into Dragon Bane. All right, I'm so excited. Let's go! Okay. Mm. Mm. Join me for a tale as we travel to a distant, distant, far-off, Forgotten, lost, faraway land. We are all traveling to the Misty Vale, a land of unknown treasures, unknown secrets, and unknown hmm, 
You're not really sure what you don't know about this place, but there are unknowns to be discovered. But one thing that you do know is that you all have come to the Misty Vale in search of glory. You've come to the Misty Vale in search of riches. You've come to the Misty Vale together. You've heard rumors of an ancient and very valuable crown buried deep inside this burial mound known as the Ritter Mound. You've walked here. It took you several days, several days of hardships. Let's go around and meet our adventurers as they draw ever closer to the destination. Please describe what Orla Moon Silver looks like. What do we see? Yeah, so Orla is, like I said, she's an elf. Um, she's kind of slender, very, or, I mean, it's a marksman. It's kind of like scout's physique. You can tell she spends a lot of time kind of running from tree to tree, just very agile looking. Um, she's got long, almost white hair, a kind of a greenish pallor to her skin. Um, not like a sickly green, like a earthy green. And she has a bow and a quiver strapped to her back. Now, Orla, you've been traveling for days with these companions. Please, what is the worst hardship that you have encountered on this trip? Honestly, her main problem is that she's just, she's a little too eager for things. Um, she has kind of rushed into a couple of fights with some wildlife that she should not have rushed into. We've kind of scrapped with a couple uh, bears and fights we could have avoided. It's not been super easy. The party, mm -hmm. making their way through the Misty Veil, vale, have been ambushed by monster after monster, beast after beast, bear after bear. Now this brings flashbacks to one member of the party. Please, Price, introduce your character. What, what do we see when we see you? When you see uh, Bastin Bloodjaw, you see a really just a huge wolf man. I mean, literally got the, the, the ears, the snout, everything. He's wearing uh, well-worn armor that definitely has a few a little cuts, a few cuts in it, yet surprisingly well taken care of. Uh, he's got dark gray fur and yellow eyes. And... Um, is actually well. I say yellow eye. His yellow eye. He's missed. His left eye isn't there. But um, and he has a, a big scar running down, like from up at the top of his cheek down to his neck, and you know looks like a rough guy. Yet surprisingly, smells very nice. Hmm. What does he smell like? Uh, he would seem to be wearing a type of uh cologne, but it's kind of a nice sandalwood type cologne. Mm. Like your car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Electric car noir, yeah. But it, this is Dragon Bay noir. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> mm. well, okay. something that you have learned in your history. You know, you were killing bears when you were just but a pup. They hate the smell of sandalwood. So as Orla draws their attention to your party, swarmed on all sides, you see their noses. <laughs> Shiver as they dart off into the other direction. But you face worse than bears. What's what's the hardest hardship that you've had on this trip? What's worse than the bear attack? The hardest hardship. <clears throat> well, Bastin loves a good fight. He loves being able to find a new foe and conquering them. So his biggest hardship was when he actually went to a town and none of them wanted to fight him. He he just kind of, he, everyone was just really nice and hospitable, which wasn't in itself a bad thing, but he, he couldn't find, he couldn't find a fight. And that, that just got really frustrating uh, for him. And, um, you know, the, even the guy said he was the toughest guy in town was like, I don't, I, I'm not really feeling it today. I have a stomach ache. And he was, the bastard was not very... Uh, happy with that. Beautiful. Who else do we have here? We have um, sort of a shorter statured member of the party. Matt, what do we see when we see your character? My kinder is not short. 
But Kanda <laughs> is a mallard. A mallard duck, some might say. <laughs> For those who don't wish to last long in combat. Makanda is sometimes called ill-tempered. But I say I solved the problem quicker than anyone. Yeah. Thank you. You solve problems pretty pretty quickly. What's the biggest problem you faced on this perilous journey into the Misty Vale? Mm. Makanda faces very little challenge. Makanda didn't come across a bear or a wolf. Makanda came across two bears and then three wolves. And Makanda took care of them quite quickly. Wonderful. With the skill of this mallard knight at your side, the beasts of the forest were light work. There's one more member of your party. Describe what your character looks like, Hudson. Yes, Makanda is a tall, weary, and straight back, long white beard and bushy eyebrows man, unbowed by age with inquisitive eyes. He is a wizard. <laughs> and he arrives precisely when he means to. Oh. Wait, are you not there? Oh, no, I'm just saying that in general. If I'm late to anything, I arrive precisely when I'm <laughs> <laughs> My What's... daughter's wedding was hilarious. <laughs> What's the Which... biggest hardship? Oh, yeah, Matt? No, just shout out to the dedication we got from Huddy Hubbard out here. Look at this. Get up. Yeah. What's he the... grew a beard for this. What's yeah. the hardest hardship you faced on this trip? Aiden? Aiden? Aiden, Aiden, you, you can just call me A, if you wish. Archmaster A, yes. Archmaster A, yes. Master and my hardest hardship I've had so far on this adventure is the other night, actually the past couple of nights, I've slept near the duck. And the duck after dinner usually has really bad bowel movements. Eh. He stinks. Stay away from With success! <laughs> I, uh... I can loan you some of that cologne. Ah, yes! Thank you, Doc. Yeah. Not a dog. I'm not a dog. But you have yeah. a name! I've told you my name five times. <laughs> it's Baston. <laughs> Well, it's good to meet you officially, bastard. I, you know what? This is probably the best we're going to be able to do. Um, yeah. Okay, fine. Whatever. Just because it's true doesn't mean to let it hurt me. Okay? Just because it's true doesn't mean to let it hurt me. What do you want about? Nothing. Mm. Wizard? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. I respect the beard. Hmm. Th thank you. Is it nighttime, Keeper? No, it is not nighttime. And are you Keeper or are you just Game Master? I'm the Game Master. Okay, thank you. And I'm also crying. So. It is daytime. That's, we're getting started really well. We, we are. <laughs> we are. So it is daytime indeed. The light is out. The wind is blowing, but there is a heavy mist that settles all over the land. You've just now arrived in the Misty Vale, and hmm, the name is certainly appropriate. You find yourselves <laughs> at the bottom of this tall hill. On top of the hill are there's even taller standing stones that seem to circle something. This all rises in a glade in the middle of the forest. The place here is strangely quiet, but yet there is this loud, ominous odor. Putrid stench. It smells a little like 
rotting vegetables. What do you do? I look at the duck. Yes, did the duck fart again? Yeah. I release ill will from my body. Next time, can you do it? Away from the camp, maybe. Just no. Okay. Well, we're proceeding uh, forward. Just, um, we uh, should uh, probably lay off the beans for dinner for the next few days. They're nourishing. Beans are a magical fruit. They say they include protein. The more you eat. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> We're proceeding forward. Come along. Yeah, so as the party goes up this hill uh, between the standing stones, you can see that there is this roughly hewn uh, square-shaped slab of stone, this big piece of stone. I'd say it's like six by six, right in the center of all the standing stones. Um, it's embedded into the earth there. I would but also yet, like to point out, Sorry, um, uh, Macander moves r a little bit slower because of his waddle. Uh, he's he's straight up. I mean, it's bipedal, but straight up has a duck waddle. So mm -hmm. he gets going, and he's getting past anyway. Square, rough, hewn shape embedded in the yeah embedded the into the earth. But it's a little cr it's a little crooked, a little lopsided. Um, w the way it's sitting there. But also, as you waddle up that hill or walk up the hill, you can see clear footprints in the grass as well. What would you like to do? Where do the footprints go? Well, you can give me a survival check. Okay, here we go. I have a five for survival. This is going to be the first roll that we're doing, so yeah. walk us through it. You ready? So you're going to need to roll a d20 and then roll under that five to succeed. You got it. Under the five. All right. The chances aren't looking good. Here we go. 14. Ah, failure. Mm. So as McAnder is looking around and trying to figure out exactly where, the, where they're going, you, you get off track. They seem to wind in and about the standing stones all the way around. They seem to even just kind of go back down the hill, back towards the direction in which you came from. But after that, you're not really sure if that even is a track. You, you, you lose them. Um, is it, would anybody else like to attempt this? Yes, I will. I also want to see if I can tell how many there were. Okay, cool. And any sort of information I can get about their gate, anything like that. Yeah. That is also a 14 and I have a 12, so that's also a failure. <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell. It, like, maybe a rain came through and maybe washed some of them away because they're very sporadic at this point. There's no clear direction that you can see. Would Bastin or um, Aiden uh, like to try? Sure. Survival, please. Survival. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I'll, I'll try. My survival is not great. It's a five. Uh-oh. Uh, that's an eight. Nope. Uh, Aiden comes in clutch. As they say, I have a 14 for survival, and I got a 15. Oh, wait, I need to get one. <laughs> oh, shit! Aiden be ballin'. It comes in clutch. Aiden is quite the Never idiot. mind. Aiden's been smoking too much on that pipe weed. <laughs> From South Father. 30 minutes without <laughs> Zaza. So, yeah. Aiden has had too much of his pipe weed. Um, McCander is gassy. Bastin, I don't know what's up with you. And or <laughs> Orla. I'm not a tracker, right? <laughs> and Orla. Orla. You're not sure either. You're not sure what left these things. You're not sure how many of them there were. And you don't notice anything else around the tracks. So sad. But what do you do as you're up here on top of this hill with that big stone slab, six by six in the center of the standing stones that reach up into the sky? I'm going to step on it. Oh. You step on it? Doosh. Solid. You can hear the thud of your foot against the stone. You stay there. 
you feel even a little more stable on top of this stone than you did um, in the grass. <laughs> it's just very heavy, hard rock. Are there pillars around? Did you describe that? Yeah, there's these tall standing stones that encircle you. What's at the top? Of each of them? There's nothing mm. at the top of them. They just all kind of come to a big point at the top. I just kind of stomp my foot on it and go, well, it's absolutely rock. I can tell that much. Hmm. From on top of there, Orla, I'll say that you can see a small gap on the side of the rock from your new vantage point um, where there is some sort of cavity underneath the rock that you're standing on. Okay. I will point that out to everyone else. And um, do y'all see anything down in there? Mackenda will look. So you're just... Kenda's bill goes in parallel with the stone. <laughs> it's very hard to see anything down into this. It's such a small gap, but if you wanted to try to push it aside, it'd probably be no problem for the for the party. I if you want to push it aside, yeah. Get off of it before they start pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> with Orla standing to the side. Um, Aiden, do you also assist pushing it? Um, no, Aiden is just going to stand and walk. <laughs> He's had a long walk so far, and and stressing his body in that way um, may prevent him from doing other things later on. Mm. So Aiden and Orla watch these two warriors get down and <laughs> push and push this heavy rock. And as you do that, you can see this underground shaft open up beneath the stone slab. No bottom can be seen, but there's this musty smell of stale air and dried up corpses that rise up from the depths. Oh, what is that smell, Makanda? <laughs> no, no, not me. This one wasn't him this time. It's those, well, I've smelled dead bodies many times, and pretty sure those are dead bodies. Perhaps it is a catacomb. You've been in a lot of catacombs? I have been uh, at a few. Uh, one for <laughs> vacation. Catacomb means evil. Because underground only holds evil. Henceforth. Wait. <laughs> That's how that works. I don't know if a dwarf would really appreciate that. Yeah. I can't hear you. I'm already going down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I follow the duck. Yep. What are you doing? Follow the duck down. What What are you doing? Uh, you're, you're, you're jumping down? Is it a jump or is it stairs? No, there's no stairs. There's just a big oh, shaft. Shit. It's just okay. a big shaft. Uh, how, how far is the it's drop? A, it's a know? huge shaft. Okay, all right. Um, you're so, not sure. You can't. You can't see the bottom. You're not sure how long it is. Um, oh. Could I light my torch <laughs> and like drop it <laughs> down do. to see yeah. how far it is? Yeah, you can for sure. Same hat. I would like to do that. Okay. All right. So it goes. <whistles> your torch disappears from view, and then you see Ugh. it douche hit the ground. It hits solid ground there. It dropped about, I'll say you can estimate, maybe like 20 feet or so, almost, maybe a little less than 20 feet. Um, but you can see that it leads down into this vaulted earthen cave, right? And there is some sort of doorway in the north wall. However, the game master said it disappeared from view, which means there's a portal about halfway down. So I say we pack up and go home because I'm not being teleported. To another realm. Well, well, I didn't mean to disappear from view. I mean, it kind of yeah, disappears. I'm I, kidding. That's <laughs> you, okay, never mind. I retcon. You see it all the way down until it hits the ground and okay, 20 you. feet all down. Right. Sorry. Do we have, Anybody have any rope? Uh, let me look in my bag. Ah, SLA. Orla has rope. I have rope. She has rope. Orla has rope. Actually, I do not have any rope. <laughs> or, Orla, just, 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 do you know if she would have... 
You said about 20 feet down? Yeah. A Let, little less than 20 feet, yeah. I'll say that's enough rope. rope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, have a, you have three feet of rope that you pull out of your bag. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's awkward. It's like, you're like you're holding a fish that you're your first fish you caught prize. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so your yeah. Your gender profile pic. <laughs> but it's just a rope. And I try to anchor that rope to um one of the standing stones and kind of drop it down the hole. Yeah, no problem. You do that. So the rope goes all the way down to the bottom of it. Um everybody um if you're attempting to go down into this chasm, now that we have this rope, you're going to get a uh, you're going to get a boon to your roll, um, which oh, is man. basically like a a, a bonus a die. You get to roll oh. you get to roll two d twenty, and take the lower number. So I'm gonna it's, like it's like disadvantage, but advantage. <laughs> I should have thought that before I said it. I know exactly. What you, mean. you know what I mean, right? Like, I know yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's like disadvantage because you roll and take the lower, but it's good. So it's but advantage. it's good. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's, I know exactly. It's, what you're saying. it's advantageous disadvantage. It's exactly. a fucking bonus die. Is what. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Don't worry. My rope. Okay, <laughs> I I seed my position as game master. I'm now the judge because I see both sides of this. Okay. It makes no! sense because you're taking it's, a lower number, which is like, like, oh, you're saying do that. I, I had yeah. luck that typically would be bad, but I ended up in a better situation. So it's like it's good luck. Well, hey, I know what that I've been there. I've been there. I mean, the silver lining turns out to be the gold lining. Oh, I'm yes, fucking... chat. You are the GM now. Good luck. Yes. Take it away, Ian. <laughs> Ian, Ian. Twitch plays D&D or Twitch plays Dragon Bane. <laughs> Don't expose our credit card information. Yeah, just <laughs> kidding, Price. I'm fucking around. Um, 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 GM, what what are we uh, what are we rolling against? What, what is the skill we're looking for? Mobility. 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 Roll it twice Mobility at the lower Alabama. number. Alabama. Mobility, Alabama is what is a good place. Ooh, yes. I got a five versus a twelve. Perfect. Yeah. I got a 15 versus a 14. That's your yeah. lower number? I, the other one was an 18. Nice. These are really good dice. I need to get better oh. dice. Worse dice. Okay. I got a 6 versus an 8, so... Yay me. This old man's got moves. Yes. All right. Well, I used our... to boogie down at the sock hop. <laughs> Arch Archmaster A McCander of Half Bay and Bastin uh Bloodjaw they make your way down crawling or you know climbing down the rope making your way to the bottom of this cave you're like where is Orla well here is Orla you fall <laughs> to the fucking <laughs> ground but you only take one point of of damage as you hit the ground you're pretty agile and nimble um, so you catch yourself. It's just a bit of a stumble, but hey, there you go. You can even, you can even pull your rope back down. Maybe you'd loosened it before you, you got back down, uh, or, or attempted. Yeah. It was ballsy. Oh, wow. well, hey, who knows? Or what? Well, maybe not. Now, let's say it's still there. Cause you got to get out. I forgot about that. Yeah, true. If you survive, um, whatever's in here. Um, great. You are now <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> So here, you're in this um, dome-shaped chamber is the best way I can describe it. The floor, beaten earth. In the darkness far above, the opening to the surface, it looks like a faintly glowing square. It just looks like a square of light. It's kind of strange to look at, the, the, the effect that it has. In the north wall... There is a set of double oak doors with iron fittings. A silvery symbol stretches across both of the doors, which are flanked by statues of knights that stand there in antiquated armor. What would you like to do? Do they have helmets? Uh, yes. The statues uh, have sort of sculpted helmets, yes. Sculpted out of stone. Helmets. Yes, oh. it's not actual armor. It's it's all sort of sculpted. Unfortunate. 
Yes. Stone statues, I should say. But yeah, you see the statues, you see the door, um, you see the symbol across the door. Um, that's what you see. What is is the that symbol, symbol like? on the on the statues as well, or is it? Hmm. Um, you don't see it on the statues, but it sticks out for sure. Sort of mm. glimmering silver on the door. Describe the statue. The statues? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Whoa. Describe the symbol. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um. Give me a learning roll, uh, McCander. Done. Hang on. Not done yet. Where's my dice? Oh, there it is. Uh, my learning is 10. And I roll a 3! McCander, you are a knight, of course. Like, you know about knightly things and about ancient orders and history and that kind of thing. You would notice or know that this symbol is a stylized crown. It's a crown um, from ancient times when the Misty Veil was ruled by a dragon-worshipping kingdom. You know that this is that insignia. I'll explain it to my friends. I'll also give you something else. The door is a little ajar. Recently? It's, I mean, it's just, it's just a little bit open. It's been like that ever since you got down here. It didn't creak open. It's it's just been a little open. Can I peek through? Um, yeah. You want to walk over and peek through? Kind of. Okay. Yeah. You go over and you peek through. He doesn't give a duck. <laughs> Don't give a duck. You peek through the door. Um. We you just see another. Dang, we don't give a duck. Hey, we don't give a dang. We don't give a duck. Sorry. You see a flickering light of a torch just off, off, off in the distance. Very small. But beyond that, there's just another little room in front of you. Mm. What is everyone else doing? Can I, just, I wanna look, can I just look around the room, see if I find anything else interesting? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you, Bastin. You're looking around the room, you see lots of footprints. Lots of footprints and also drag marks in the floor. Hmm. Are those drag marks leading towards the now more open door? Yes, they are. Um, so, yeah, why don't you give me a spot hidden? All right, I got to beat a five. That's good. Uh, spot hidden. Uh, I did not. I got a 13. Okay, cool. You don't really notice much else. Uh, Orla. What's going on with Orla? What type of architecture is this? Like, human, mallard, wolfkin, whatever. Um, you would, you would, hmm, what can I, what can I, I'll say. Mostly going off the statues, I feel like. Human, the, the statues okay. look human, for sure. Okay. You, yeah, you, you know, you, you would recognize the, these aren't sort of your, your kind of, or mallard kind, these are human. I would also go up with. Um, McCander, and also try to peek through the door a little bit. <laughs> well, here, how about you give me a scouting roll? Okay. Oh, my dice fell off my desk. Hold on, let me get my other one. Not that for me. Oh, that is a five versus 12. Mm, five versus 12, oh. perfect. So as you're going forward, you hear like the slightest squeak. There is this cauldron of vampiric bats that hangs in clusters on the ceiling. I'm just going to freeze and say, all right, now nobody move too suddenly. We've got a couple of bats above us. Don't panic. Archmaster A, what are you doing? <laughs> Um, well, I'm looking up at the bats right now. I was going to try to light a little bit of my self-farving weed in my pipe, but it seems as though this may be a bad time. So, I'm wondering <laughs> if I should shoot off a fireball to scatter these buggers, but I don't know. Am, am I allowed to talk to the group without alarming the vampiric 
bloodthirsty bats. Let's see if you can. Give me a sneak roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sneaking's a four. Let's go for a one. All right, thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Hey, fireball. should I use a fireball? Um, <laughs> well, here's the thing. You see a hundred vampiric bats sort of like come to life, awake from their slumber as you step forward and make a little too much noise in order to uh, alert your companions. They wake up chattering frenetically. And that's when they descend. We're going to roll for initiative here. So in Dragon Bane, the way it works is you use a deck of cards. I got my Beatles deck of cards here. And you basically have your 10, 1 through 10. Everybody picks and you go in lowest order. That's a little hard for us to do over Zoom at the moment. So everyone is going to roll a D10. This is my homebrew rule. I'm already homebrewing the game and doesn't even it's not even out yet. Um, mm. Everyone roll a D10 and lowest number is going to go. First, and we're gonna go in that order. Well, should I roll D10? Okay, there we go. I got an eight. Okay. Got a six. A five. Okay. And a five. All right. Who wants to go first, uh, Macander or uh, Bastin? Bastin, take it away. Sure. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, Bastion, you're, you're, you're going to go before McCander? Yes. All right. And you said you got a six, Carly? Yes. Cool. And Hudson with an eight? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dope. Cool. All right. And the bats will go last, unfortunately. All right. Bastion, you are up first as these bats uh, swoop and screech and whirl above you, sort of. <laughs> they might even like hit you in the face with their wings. <laughs> These furry creatures that fly around. What do you do? Well, um, I think my best bet is I have a throwing spear, and I just kind of want to try and spear one of them bats. All right, cool. Uh, so, if I'm remembering how this works, I need to roll under a 14 because that's my spear score. Yes to hit mm -hmm. uh no that's a 17 cool your spear <laughs> swords pass and douche hits into the wall um as the bats continue to go uh mccander mm. slicing and dicing and we're swinging that uh that sword yeah they're all around you so yeah you can definitely sort of swing the sword in front of you how does that go we're about to find out. Am I rolling against my sword skill? Yes. Okay, my sword skill is 14. I roll a... That was the wrong dice. Give me one moment. That was a d10. <laughs> I rolled a 13, and my sword is a 14. Perfect. We'll roll your damage plus your strength damage bonus. Okay. Damage for a short sword is a d10. Let me roll that d10. Nine. Nice. My damage bonus for strength is a D4. I'm not prepared. I didn't expect to do so good. <laughs> okay. Fireball. Two. Okay. Three, four minus. Uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Great, great, great. Two. Perfect. Nine and a two. Beautiful. So you slice and you can see a wing fly off and sort of go to the ground as the bat drops and flops around. Um, ah! Orla, your turn. I'm just knocking arrows and just shooting at these things because I don't know what else to do. Yeah. <laughs> so that is. They swoop and screech. So it's 16 versus 14. Oh, it's dark. It's dark in here, you know, and when, you know, you're, you're, you're an elf. You can sort of have these extra senses, but even the bats are too fast and they seem to be supernatural in, in and of themselves. No ordinary bats. Um, all right. I would also like to move because I, I did read the rules and I do get a move action and an actual action. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to move towards the door and say, um, 
if I might suggest possibly moving on. <laughs> I like that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Yes. Missing every shot I'm taking right now. Archmaster A, what would you like to do? Um, just like Orla, uh, but first I would like to move, make my move and then an action. And I would like to move uh, where Orla is moving towards the door. Mm -hmm. And then uh, turning around to lay down some cover fire, I would like to <laughs> shoot fireball and um, cast some fireballs in the direction of these vampiric bats. Oh, all right. You're casting fire. You, what is it? Fireball? Uh, fireball, yes. Let's look at the magic here. Fireball. Oh, no, I'm just throw, throwing a bottle of fireball at them. Closed area. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, those bats would get fucked up. All I bought right. a sixteen pack at the Circle K. <laughs> 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 to cast a spell, roll for your skill level in the relevant school. If it succeeds, the spell has the intended effect as per its description. Otherwise, it has no effect. You can push the roll. The option, yeah. So you can push the roll if needed. Um, perfect. Cool. So, so I have a 14 in elementalism. Mm hmm. Gotta get below that. I got a 10. Perfect. Cool. So that fireball is gonna inflict d a d6 of damage. Excellent. All right, let's see. Show me the money. Four. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Is there no damage bonus with spells, I guess? Um, there is not, but what you can do, um, there's like spells have power levels, right? So they range from like one to three and power casting levels? a spell costs two, um, willpower points per level per power level. Right. So he just cast it at first level, I guess, I guess I could have asked, did you want to cast it at a higher level than just one? Um, well, that is a question I have. Um, where, where is my level? Like I, I cannot see where my right. So there, there is no level um, oh. at, in the way that you're thinking of, but um, each you can cast spells at different levels between one and three. If you would like to just cast it at first level, you only uh, spend two of your willpower points. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to mm -hmm. cast it at second, you spend four. Cast it at three, you spend six. You have a total of 19 willpower points. That's right under right. your magic school thing. So how many do you want to spend? I should I should have asked uh, first off. Um, I, I'm just going to stick with what I've done so far. And just Perfect. cast it at level one cool. and stick with two points of willpower. Cool. You take out a whole chunk of bats and, yeah, and fall through the ground. Now, Can I retrieve my throwing spear before I follow them in? Not yet. Um, okay. it's the bat's turn. Oh. Whap, whap, wow. So, the bats. Um, let's see. Let's see what the bats do. I love the, I love the, the boxes for enemies and monsters in this game. I don't get to, I don't get to, I don't have to think about their tactics. I get to decide what they do with a die. All right. Mass attack. The bats, they split up. They, like, were in, like, chunks and pods and clusters. No, they all disperse and swarm on all of you. So each of you, each of you four, are going to take <clears throat> one point of damage each. Oh, well, nice. my armor rating's two, that means I don't take any damage, right? Right. Oh. oh, so that means my fall damage would have been negated, or no? Or is that only from attacks? Oh, good question. That's a good question. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, armor rating, ba -ba -ba. Um, physical attack, yeah. Physical okay. attack, yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm good. Dang, I should have rolled higher on that one. Urgh. Next up oh, is Bastin. Um, the bats—they have been um, all. There's almost like a third of them than what there were when y'all started. Y'all put in some work on these bats. So I would like to uh, retrieve my my throwing spear mm -hmm. and then get as close as I can to the rest of everybody else trying to get through the door. Okay, you're just trying to leave. Well, I actually, when I get as close to the door as I can, if there's any bats near me, I'd like to attack them with my long spear. Yeah, yeah, they're sort of swarming down, yeah. still in front of you. You can okay. do that. Cool. 
So I need to be a 14. That's a three. Oh, mm. yeah, you do it. Please roll that damage. Roll that beautiful damage. That's going to be so much damage. <laughs> um, so that would be 2d8 plus a d6. Damn. Yeah. That's four, five. So nine plus five. So 14 damage. Please describe how Bastion Bloodjaw takes out the rest of the bats with a the spear. Rest of the he kind of almost just like in a flurry of a bunch of like of jabs like just kind of almost you know <laughs> he, he like, that's all and folks he, and then when he's done there's still like four or five bats just like on the spear you know like he skewered through all of them like that you know and so he has like kind of grab him just kind of like oh fuck, fuck. Uh, and he has to kind of try to get him off the spear from the bobby ian in the chat says shiskabat just, ooh, oh, ooh, yes. That is now the name of that is now your weapon. You must mark out long spear and write shishkabat is what you have. Same damage, but there's always gonna be like bat on it. It's the, <laughs> advantage towards bats. Looks like we'll be dining well tonight. Advantageous disadvantage. <laughs> and all of the enemies are down. Good job, everyone. You've made it to this door. Do you pass this threshold? Hey. Hey. Yeah. Great. Hey. <laughs> so what you enter into is you see this small room ahead of you, but you also see a path off to your right and a path off to your left. Do you proceed into the room straight ahead of you or do you go off to the east or off to the west? The candle goes left. I will follow, so I'm not splitting the party. Yes, come along, Moon Civil. Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll stay with the party. Uh, and you, go. bastard. Hey? Well, what did you just call me? <laughs> no, he's hey. talking to me. <laughs> yes, oh. this is Bastard Bloodjaw. Oh, Bastard. yes, yes, I thought you called me. Oh, forget about it. Uh, yes, for the first time, I'm going to follow the group. Ah, private. <laughs> you move through this dark, damp tunnel through packed earth that branches off. As you can see behind you, off to the, the, the north. But there are these slithering roots, worms, and centipedes that are hanging like stalactites from the ceiling. There, there are curious drippings that drop to the ground making the, the ground a little slippery as you walk across it. Um, let me roll for, for something. Let's so see if something happens as we're moving through here. There are shadows all around you. As I mentioned, this place is indeed dark. But you see these translucent figures with these Twisted faces seem to move out of the shadows. There's a sudden shriek, a sudden scream off to your side. Everyone, um, roll against your, your will for me, please. One at a time. Bastion. I thought will was wisdom this whole time, and it's not. Um, will. That's a natural one. Dude, nice. in this oh, game, that is called a dragon. Yeah. Yes. A dragon? It's, it's called dragon. a dragon, yeah. That's Nat, fucking awesome. <laughs> Nat 1s are called dragons. Nat 20s are called demons. Oh. Because the Swedish title of this game is Dragons and Demons. Cool. Or, you know, well, yeah. Hudson, you're muted. Oh. <laughs> Um, all right, McKenna will go next. So my willpower points, I'm not seeing Will uh, on my sheet here. No? One of your base abilities. W-I-L-L? -L? It's between intelligence and charisma. Oh, yes, I see. I was looking at the wrong words. Thank you. I appreciate that. Did you also no, think was it was wisdom? I thought word. it was wisdom. Yeah, I'm like, rolling against a 14. Here we go, and I roll a 17. Fuck! <laughs> okay. Looks like you are 
suffering from some fear. Let's see what happens. You scream in horror. <laughs> you let out the loudest scream. It's almost louder than these spirits that are <laughs> off to the side of you. Um, oh my goodness. Um, you're all around. You're you're all together, right? Yes. Um. Yes. Yeah. 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 Are they spirits or are they Nazgul? Because Carly says they're Nazgul, and I prefer oh. them to be Nazgul. I mean, if there's nine of them. Yeah. There's Again, nine, well, there's nine of them. Lord of the Rings hyperfixation has wormed its way in. So sorry. <laughs> it happens. Okay. We've all been. I don't there. know how that happened. Ism. So what about what about Orla and A? Um. Uh, they're Probably taking nine. the hobbits to Isengard. So you succeeded? Yes. Cool. Nine versus ten. Sorry. Cool. In A? Oh, yes. I rolled a stellar one. I got a demon. Oh, oh my gosh. Demon. It's a demon time. 20. In D&D, I'd be, you know, as the kids say, Kazuntite. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Where kids have you been hanging around? You talking about a child from 1970s Austria? Kazoon height? I guess, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta stop traveling to these other worlds on my off time. Um Archmaster A's, his face turns the same color as his beard. White. Your face Ooh. goes completely white at the side of these spirits, right? Y'all have never seen this guy like this. You know, he usually he's chill. He's laid back. He's smoking his pipe weed. He is okay. Not now. If you see him bothered, you know all y'all got to be bothered too. So, everybody, please check um, scared on your sheet. You all have the scared condition. You're all going to get a bane or a penalty die. on even all. With my, even with my dragon? Even with that. Damn. On all rolls dealing right. with willpower. Wow, so that affects everybody? Yeah, they saw, they saw, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> wow. Because they're right there with you. It said anybody within um, 10 meters. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I thought my dragon could have prevented this. Prevented your own thing, but, you know, once yeah. you saw that, that was, that was just icing on the cake. Too much. Yeah. So what's your reaction now with these things? Do you continue down the hall which where you're going? Do you turn back? What do you do? You can even talk to each other. We gotta keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Run! Keep moving. Run! <laughs> I have my bow just aimed at him. And I'm just like booking it. Yeah, but you hear him say, Whoa! Go! Go forward! You make um, yeah. GM, real quick, is it okay if I uh, use a puff of smoke to uh, hide our escape? <laughs> yes, you can send them a puff of smoke, which is a magic trick in this game. Tricks, um, they don't uh, require any sort of. Uh, you always succeed, basically. No rules require. Puff of smoke yeah. behind you as you disappear into the oh, next wow. room. Gazoon tight. But I'll tell you this. You hear this faint rattling off in the distance behind you, something that you hadn't heard earlier. Anyway, in this next room, you are in a dark and damp chamber with an earth floor again. But there are these dugout burial niches um, that are covering the walls, floor to ceiling. You see broken skeletons. Um, just rags that are moldering and shreds of crushed pottery are all littering the place. This place has been clearly robbed, right? Vandalized. Like somebody came in here and broke up the stuff to take out the treasures from inside. There's skeletons that have been dragged out to the center of the floor, jars crushed, clothes slashed. This is what you see. But beyond that, there is a locked uh, portcullis, um, this block in the passage. Um, in front of you. And the reason you might know it's locked is there is a broken key stuck in the lock. What do you do? 
are, do we, are there like just one half of broken key or it's like a like a both halves of the broken key um one half of the broken key is it the cap that goes inside the lock or is it more like yeah a... yeah so it's like that part's stuck in there oh only a little bit sticking out yeah mm, okay. can i try and get it out you can try for sure of course would that be agility what, what would i um let's see what i can get you to roll for that um mm -hmm. Bastin, I would like you to roll a sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. Oh, God, I got to beat a six. Let's go. That's a ten. Yeah, it, it does not it does not work. Um, may I have a spot hidden from everyone? I'm sorry. That sounds familiar. Oh, I got it. Four. Out of, under, I got under four, five. four versus five. Like, four versus five. Nice. Um, uh, 19. So no. <laughs> A and Orla don't see this, but Macander and Bastin, you see hiding behind the skeletal remains in one of the sort of burial uh, holes close to the floor. Is, you hear this first. <laughs> You see this goblin inside, and as he makes eye contact with you, you can see he is scared out of his wits. What do you do, Macander and Bastin? Ah! Ah, ah, ah. Well, no, 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 no! I, 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 I try to grab uh, Macander. Like he, I don't think he's attacking us. I don't think he's attacking us. <laughs> and I want to grab the goblin. Macander, reach for the goblin's collar. Ah! No, let me go. Let me go. I need to get out of here. <laughs> what are you doing? Here? We gotta run. Goblin. Stop screaming. Hmm. What, what did he say? He told us to stop screaming. <laughs> Please, we gotta get I out. I never of here. talk loud. I don't know what anybody. I, I... We gotta get out of here. This is my loud. This is my soft voice. We gotta obviously. Get... Trap bastard. We gotta get out of here. Okay. Listen, the rest of my party killed, slaughtered, all of them. I don't want it to happen to you. We gotta get the fuck out of here. We intend to go forward, goblin. No, we gotta go out, go back and get up the hole. But first, we gotta hide. He might. What happened to the key? Here, just. He has this key. He has a ring of keys, actually, this big iron ring, and it has three keys on it. Two intact, and one is broken, like in half. Can I take him? Yeah. Okay, I'll take him. <laughs> What's in here, goblin? <laughs> What's in here? The Death Knight. The Death Knight? The Death Knight. He oh, I'd boy. like to fight the Death Knight. That sounds awesome. That sounds fucking awesome. The we thought so. There's no challenge to Makanda. Uh, well, well, just let me go so I can get out of here. You can fight him, but I gotta go. No, no. You open the door first, and then you, you go. You have the keys. You open the door. I want to leave. It's broken. The key's broken. Broken. What do you mean? Well, how am I supposed to open it if it's broken? I know it's broken. Go to another door. There's more keys. Fix what? it, goblin. How do I? Th I don't go how to fix it. I'm trying to get out of here. I don't want to die. Sam, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Better fix it. How? Well, can you get the part out or turn it? You have tiny fingers. <laughs> okay. Yes, I will. Okay, I'll try. Put me down, please. Okay. I'll kill you if you leave. Okay. <laughs> you put him down? I uh, put him between me and the door and then let loose. Give me a mobility roll. My mobility is... Boy, he's booking it. Second My mobility is, is a 10. I'm rolling. <laughs> Four nine. <laughs> nice. I got an eight. <laughs> Shit. 
rolled a uh, nine versus a ten. I rolled an eight, and it's still a success. He is going to sort of almost that duck between your legs, but that's a pun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the duck between your legs and book it towards the way you came. But as soon as you can, like, as soon as you, soon as he gets under you, he is gone. You can hear the, the pitter patter of goblin feet and his breath. You the master. So he, I, I, well, here's the I thing. Try to grab him. He's gone, right? He's gone. He's he gone. rounds that corner, but you hear the breathing. Stop. Suddenly, you hear the pitter patter. Stop. Suddenly. What you hear, you hear these heavy, (laughs) dragging footsteps. You hear the rattling of chain mail. And you hear this (laughs) scraping, metallic scraping against the wall. What do you all do? I'm going to go through the door. Fix the door. I got the keys. I'm fixing the door. I'm going through the door. Uh, you can... Tr- you, uh, it's it's like jammed. It's it's really, really jammed. Okay, I'll try his strength. I mean, anything I can to can get the Can I help him by using an arrow as like leverage to try to Ooh. kind of pop the key? Physics. Like into the place it needs to be in? Well, you can try... Give me a give give me a sleight of hand with a bane. So if that uh, doesn't work, die. I have a spell that says open door. So wait, actually, that's convenient. No, not really. But I was <laughs> not like gust of wind. <laughs> you could try to break the door down, or you I didn't could... think this thing would ever come in useful, but here it is. Yeah, you the could 13 try. Thirteen versus seven. Sorry. Open door. Yeah, you can what try. Are, what am I rolling? You you trying to break the door? I'm trying to get it open, yeah. Um, My new spell. Remove broken keys. So either sleight of hand with a with a bane, or you try to break that door down with um, a, a tax. Okay, I'll go f- with my battle axe. I'm going to swing, which my axes are 14. Okay, so I'm rolling versus my axe. Mm-hmm. Axe is skill. I got a six. Okay. So, my damage for Battle X is 2d8. Let me pull out an 8. And just don't forget your strength bonus, too. Of course. So, first d8 was an 8. Second d8. Hang on, you can't see it. Hang on. <laughs> oh, you what see are we it? That's at? an 8. That's oh. an 8 right there. Good. That's nice. Two fucking 8s with a 1d4. Hang on. That's why I always that's why I always hate doing fucking backgrounds. Cause I'm not hiding this shit. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Why am I leaning down like I can see better? (laughs) That's a two. Was that eighteen? The sixteen plus two for an eighteen. Bro. Damn. Macander is dang like you are. Putting all your feathers into this, dude. You he just leave. hears Johnny to that door. I was going to say, here's Ducky. So. Here, uh, that's better. Here's Ducky. That's better. Here's Ducky. so scared right Douche. now. <laughs> like, you see iron shatter. <laughs> this door is caving in. In like you, you are putting in absolute work on this thing. Would anybody yeah. else like to attack it? Like yeah. you, you almost have it knocked down. Um, I'm, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll hit it. I'm counting down some time until something happens. Come on, I'll bastard! Sure. All right. Don't I know what a spear will? How a spear will help? But I'm just gonna. It's an old. It's an ancient, ancient door. I'm just hey. gonna try to hit it with my spear. And he weakened it, man. You can stab that. Stab yeah, it. I'm gonna sucker. stab. I'll, I'll stab the door. <laughs> um. It's like a portcullis, you know what I mean? So that it's just is, like I, I, I now I, I I my skills a fourteen and I rolled a fourteen, so that hits, right? Yeah, it hits. All right, two nice. D eight plus a D six. That's beefy, son. Eight and two. So ten plus four, fourteen. Yeah. My God. And just hit the 
Bastard. <laughs> Bastard. Oh, Bastard. The spear. Boosh takes the door down. You see this thing crumble <laughs> into just bits of metal, like shrapnel flies. And this door is down. Orla, oh, yeah. A, you see this happen. <laughs> you see this door go down, and now the passageway is clear. Go, 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 Fucking go. Up. Yeah. Blind, yeah. you fools. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, you, again, you, you get out of that room. Something was pursuing you. You're not quite sure what. Something large. But now, you're in a small room with an oak table in the middle and burning torches on the walls. There is this mummified woman in gilded chainmail that sits at the far end of the table, just like the corpse. There's an iron-fitted oak door directly behind the mummy, and it bears an ancient symbol in glittering silver. It is the stylized crown that you saw outside. What do you do? Uh, so, so just for clarification, the the crown that we saw uh, sigilized that is the real thing right in front of us. Um, no, no it, this is on the the symbol on the door is the same symbol as oh, the crown. Same symbol. Okay. Yep. Okay. What's on the table? Uh, a mummy. Uh, and... So, so the mummy is at the table. What's on the table? Oh. You can see the mummified woman's claw-like hands rest on this magnificent bastard sword set with jewels. Oh, it's beautiful. That. It is oh, beautiful. That. Um, and again, also, again, speaking of beautiful, she's wearing like like again gilded chainmail, light, flexible. It's it's on her body there. Is there anything else we know? I, I can notice in the room any other details. Yeah, so north, there's that door, double door with the symbol. Mm -hmm. um, to the east, there is a tunnel that's blocked by another portcullis. This one's intact. This one's not broken down. Um, to the south, there's another portcullis. And as you look through it, you can kind of see that chamber from which you came in. So past it, there's a room. Past that, there is eventually that, that chamber where the bats So if we had gone right, if we would have ended up in the same... If you would have gone straight, you would have ended up here. If you would have gone okay, okay. straight, gone through the portcullis that was there, you would be Bam. here. Okay. You went. You all went around the side and kind of worked your way around into here. Um, what else? West is where you came from. Yeah. So what do you do? Grab the sword, Blender. Stay away from the mummy. Uh -oh. Um, uh, GM, is there a way, uh, from a safe distance that I could perhaps, uh, take a look at this mum mummified person and, and s tell whether or not I know, uh, the origin of this, uh, being? Yeah, give me a learning roll. Oh, good. I know how to do this. Oh, yes, a five. Dope. Uh, so with uh, I had a 14, so yeah, 5 versus 14, and... so winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, yeah, so um, in your youth, you watched um, a certain Brendan Fraser movie. So mm. with this mummy that's there, yeah, just kidding, um, no. Um, it's the Renaissance. <laughs> with this mummy, you would, you would recognize that this mummy comes from that same dragon worshiping Man. empire that used to rule the misty veil vale. and you can tell from the the clothing from uh the adornments that are there that this is a person of nobility this person is someone within the rankings of the dragon knights or within the family of a dragon knight you would recognize that and i'll also give you a little extra i'll say you know that Perhaps you did some learning uh, or some, some studies into this culture where you really understand that um, this was a caste that was powerful. Um, you even learned pieces of the language back then. So this is what you would know. Nobility tied to the Dragon Knights. Okay. Right on. 
Orla, is there anything that you would like to do? There is the mummy sitting there at the table, the bastard sword on the on the table. Um, yeah. I just want to check out the door. I don't want to go through it. I just want to see if there if it's locked, if it's trapped, anything like that. Okay, yeah. Um, um, skirting get, around the room to not walk past the mummy. Give me a spot hidden. Cool. Not good at that. It's a 13 versus 6. You're looking around. You don't see any traps on it or anything. You don't see um, anything suspicious. The door doesn't seem to be locked or anything. Just a big double door. You're able to pass through it if you needed to, but I know you're sort of just looking. Yeah. Okay, cool. Would anybody else like to do anything? We've seen that there is these doors behind the mummy. Um, Orla looked around, didn't see any traps or anything. There's a sword on the table. Um, yeah. And so Bastion has not taken the sword. I've just been looking at it, but a very clearly, very hungrily looking at that sword. And where are the hands of the mummy placed upon the sword? Um. So uh, how do how do I describe this? Um. It's, it's just sort of like rests on the sword. Um, one hand like just like rests on the blade, sort of open. The other hand is sort of like the mummified fingers are clutched around the, the, the hilt. That's all I had to hear. Okay. But again, brittle fingers. I don't encourage him. <laughs> is the, uh, so the door, if we know he's going to do it. it. <laughs> Have we tried to open the door? Uh, it is. It doesn't look locked or anything. I haven't tried to open it, but it doesn't look trapped or locked. I, I feel like we're in the Goonies. I feel like we mm -hmm. need to play like a piano to open the door. Hell, yeah. yeah. I'll, let me give Hudson one more thing with the learning roll from earlier. Oh no 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 no! Um, I'll have I'll have everybody roll for this. I'll have everybody roll for this. I just want to okay. see if anybody would know this. I'll take one more learning roll from everybody all around. Learning, yeah. learning. That's Again, a two versus six. Boom! You're treasure nice. hunters. I want to give you all some more information. You're treasure wow. hunters. Uh, that is a that is a demon. Oh, Bastion, you don't know this. You don't 12 know. Twelve versus ten. I don't matter. Yeah, A and Orla. Listen, y'all came. Y'all didn't come just to, to, to mess around in a, in a dungeon. Y'all came to get treasure, to get stuff. I'll tell you that you recognize this sword. You put the pieces together. A saw the, so the, the dragon knight sort of garb. You saw the symbol on the door. You all know that this sword isn't just a sword. This is the fiend carver. When this sword gets within like 10 feet of, um, let's see, wait, no, not 10 feet. I got to do the 10 meters to feet uh, transition. 32. Whenever it gets into 32 feet of a demon, it glows red. Oh. So it's sort of like it can sense. It's not sting. It's bling. It's bling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What was it called? The fiend carver? The, the, the fiend carver. That's a like crazy The foe hammer. hammer. Yeah. <laughs> the fiend carver. What do you do? I'm going to look at A and say, is that what I think it is? I believe so. It's the fiend carver. It should glow bright red when a something draws close. I can't remember what it is, but... Uh, something. It's not a thing. That's too obvious. <laughs> so we shall cut the hand. I'm I think it's a... Yes. Uh, well, no, no, don't, don't touch it. I'm, I'm sure oh, this right. is. No, 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 yeah! no. I'm no. <laughs> getting ready to shoot this mummy. <laughs> <Yeah! laughs> can I cut the brittle hand? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you can. Pull of a tooth, throw yourself in next time. <laughs> you you can. Pull of a duck. You can cut the hand. <laughs> it goes down. <laughs> your, your, it was an axe you're using or a sword or what? It's the battle axe, yeah. I'm trying With to cut the, the axe, hand off the head. Your axe goes into the table. Dust, bone dust sort of flies up as 
the hand is just now attached to the to the theme carver. Does it move? No, you just it's just disconnected now. There you are, bastard. Take the sword. I'm kind of shocked that you weren't trying to take the sword for yourself, to be honest with you. I think we're all shocked that you weren't trying to take the sword for yourself. Well, why would I? I have Matilda. You uh, You cut her hands off. Just in case. Alright. Alright, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the sword. I would, I would like to grab the sword. <laughs> you pick. You take the sword, and this is almost as if you see this force just sort of leave the mummy, <laughs> materializing over the top of the table stands youthful, a beautiful, powerful, wearing the same garb and the same sort of visage as the mummy, but in this spectral floating blue. Give that back if you know what's good for you. It says, uh, and only A can understand. Um, um, it's an ancient Bast language that only you know. Yes, uh, I keep blinking out. But uh, Bastion, um, listen, um, I, it, it's probably a wise thing to give the sword back to this spectre. They are not happy right now. Oh, but I want it. Uh, I know. We we could find you another one. I I'm sure you where we are. Another there's legendary plenty blade. Of what, what will it go do? Fine, uh, fine. Back the Lego of it. But you owe me a sword. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you don't have to give it up. But I mean, if you want to fight this spectre, uh, I'm sorry. Do you? Do you How do you, but I mean, if you if you if you try to attack a ghost, it's just gonna go through the ghost. You can't hit a ghost. I mean, it, well, what's, what's the fun in fighting somebody that's already dead? Well, I saw like uh, I saw a guy one time uh, shoot fire at a ghost. I've let go of the it, sword by now. Like, okay, all right, we're getting rid of the sword. Tell me, ghost, do you bleed? I don't think the ghost speaks you mere bleed. English. Can you can you ask it then? questions and you seem to know what it's saying i mean um yes i can the words Hello. the words get foggy as you try to communicate um what what you pick up from her speech you hear the word you hear the words dragon and empire repeatedly mentioned you also hear the name Elidane mentioned. You also mentioned something about the Emperor's gift and the struggle between corruption and the cleansing fire. As she goes on, you realize the intricacies of this language are far beyond your studies, but you get that. Dragon, Empire, Elidane, the Emperor's gift, and the struggle between corruption and cleansing fire. As she floats around you all, she looks. And she sort of floats in front of the door. Wait, I have a question. Hold on. Yes. Before you leave, I know you're trying to leave. You're going for the door. Um, do you know anything about this death knight that's kind of hanging out there? You can keep the sword and everything, and thank you for telling me all that wonderful information about your past life and stuff. But this Death Knight, do you know anything about this guy? Where can I fight him? She yes, where, 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 what, no, hold, hold on. She crosses her arms and says, Elodane. Oh, okay, that, all right, all right. And do you know his? Do you know Eladane's weakness? Eladane. Eladane. All right. Well, um, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, go in peace. She stays there. She stays in front of the door with her arms crossed. The door we came through, or the door we're trying to go through. The door you're trying to go through. 
I mean, she's like, we could just walk through her. I mean, right? I mean, that feels it a is a ghost. Well, she won't get out of the way. That's, you know, not exactly polite. Is it impolite to walk through a ghost? Um, uh, let me look. And, uh, A is going to pull out his diary um, and, and just look through it to see if there's any point in time where he had gone through a specter or ghost and seemed to have irritated that ghost or specter. Okay, give me your intelligence. Oh, okay. Can I try to back that up? Ooh, a, what are you backing up? A six versus seventeen. Never mind, doesn't don't need it. Okay, I'll give you a little information on the ghosties, if you will. Um, yeah, I'll <laughs> I'll let you know that the ghosts are immaterial, right? Ghosts are immaterial, so like you can't really like hit them or physically interact with them. Yeah, you would go through it. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, we, we should be fine. A couple of years ago, I did the same thing. <laughs> she was a real sweetheart about it. You say sometimes. So what do you do? You know, I'm guess... already at the door, so I guess I would reach to open it. So as you reach through um, the lady to open the door... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I'm just apologizing the whole time. She glares down at you and says, No. Okay. Oh. We're going to take a break. Oh, uh. Cool. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Um, yeah. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you, Ian, Whoop. as always, in the chat. Whoop. And everybody else yes. watching. Having a good Whoop. time. Awesome. Cool. Bye. We'll be right back.
And we are back. Deep under the Ritter Mound, Archmaster Aodin, Macander of Half Bay, Orla Moonsilver, and Bastion Bloodjaw face the lady. This translucent, faintly blue, shimmering phantom of a tall warrior maiden in full length chainmail and a gilded headband. Her face, once looking sad yet dignified, is now turned to anger as Orla tried to pass through the chamber to things unknown. Back! Or you all will die! Is what if she's gonna fight us, I'm taking that fucking sword! Is what Aiden can now. is what Aiden can sort of piece together. We're gonna roll initiative again. D ten, right? Yep. Say, I can't understand. I'm getting the vibes that I should back the fuck up at least. Oh my god. That's a six. seven. Cool. And there's a six. I also have a six. Okay, who wants I to go first also between you? I have a seven. McCander, go first. Do you want to just base it off of our agility score? Well, yeah, you can, I'll let y'all decide. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we can. I have an eight. I have a 14. So I guess me than you? Sure. Cool. Bastin. And then Aiden. And then the lady. Where's the lady going to go? Aiden, you. First. Aiden, you look 60 years younger. <laughs> he got hot. <laughs> oh, got yes. Hot. I, I got very. um, Actually. I have to tell you the truth. I'm I'm not actually that old. It's been a wig and a beard this entire time. Most oh, wizards man. are about 60 to 80 years old, and I'm only 28, and I'm just trying to pass as a good wizard. Bastin puts his right hand on, on your shoulder and goes, Just be yourself. I appreciate that. Orla with her arm and a ghost goes, Can we maybe do this another time? I think that's fair. That's fair. (laughs) So the lady towers over Orla and looks down into your very soul. Her eyes go wide as her eyes meet yours. Inside, you can see your very life flashing before your eyes as you can see death. The death of everyone you ever loved happening. Ah. You can see it. Um, Normally, I would have you roll to see if you become scared. You're already suffering from that. (laughs) <laughs> so we're just gonna see what, we're just we're gonna see what's gonna happen on the fear table. Give you something else. Wild we're now double scared. Wild panic. Okay. Panic. Um, in a fit of utter panic, you flee the scene as fast as you can. Damn it. The only way to get back into the action here is to make a willpower roll. But of course I do with a bane. You have a bane, so yeah. How does the bane work again? We, it's, 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 it's a penalty. It's a penalty die. It's a disadvantageous advantage. Yeah, it's like it, it's like advantage, but if you had disadvantage, it's like a disadvantage advantage. So detect yeah, the higher just, number. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How do you? Understand? Next, Macander. Okay. Um, I don't think swinging at this thing is going to help. Um. Uh, there is actually a list of actions in the quick start rules um, that you can kind of see really? there. It's on page yeah, 12. Go to page 12 of the quick start rules. Oh, page 12! Page 12 implies or tells me I can dash, make two different kinds of attacks, break down a door, first aid, pick up an item. Take cover. Take cover, which may be the way to go. Um, now, taking cover behind a solid object imposes a bane on range attacks aimed at you, which is the intention. So we are going to maybe uh, pull out one of these chairs of this table, if there is one, mm-hmm. and hide behind, um, using it sort of as like a much larger, I have a shield, but not a great shield. We're going to put this in front of us as a great shield almost. Dope. Cool. Great. Um, Orla. You're running away. You want to give me a willpower with a bane? Yep. Let's see if you can get it back in the air. And a 17. Mm. Versus a 10. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Orla, what is it? You're freaking out. What does that look like? How how does that manifest? So, Orla saw the deaths of everyone she ever loved. Um, (laughs) She did. That's what you said. (laughs) I didn't mean to laugh at it. 
no, I'm, like, I'm like, ah! Here's the thing. Her entire village has been wiped out by a troll. Like, that's her backstory. Ugh. So she's just, like, reliving this in her head. And she's just got to get the fuck away from this. Mm. So... And and yeah, uh, in the chat I can see. Uh, so she's a mummy and a ghost. Yeah, there's a mummy that's sitting physically at the table still, and this ghost that has sort of come out of it, spectral and blue, flying around. She's a ghost and a bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh huh. Um, you, guys are, you, ever, you haven't seen that one? Yeah, okay. No, I'll, I'll I haven't. Send it later. I, I haven't I'll, seen I'll that one. It. Um, no. I'll, I'll send it later. Um, Bastin, <laughs> bastard. Speaking of which. Yeah. Um, your turn. So I, I guess willpower roll, right? Four. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna try and go get the sword. On oh, the table. I'm yeah, you can, yeah. It. Let's see. That that'll be that'll be your action. Yeah, going and trying to just pick up the sword. Cool. Do I need to do the willpower roll for that or no? No, she is um like fleeing. She is um. Wait. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna go yeah, grab the sword. Yeah. I'm gonna grab that sword. Cool. I don't think you need to make a willpower roll. Am I missing something? Picking up an item. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. That counts my action, the right? The picking up of the. That's a small action, I believe, or like a minor action. Yeah, you can pick it up. Yeah, for sure. Cool. What are the stats on this bad boy? The stats on this sword. Um, let me give them to you. Fiend. What was it? Fiend. What? The fiend carver. Um. So it's um. Does a two d eight. Of damage, durability 15. Dang. Cool. Is there anything else you'd like to do now? Uh, I imagine that used all my movement as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I mean, so yeah, I can't attack. So I guess, yeah, that, that's my turn. Cool. Aiden, there is this ghost that's floating around. I'm in front of that door. You can see it. It just scared the bejesus out of Orla. What would you like to do? Amy? Um, yes. Uh, oh yeah. Um, uh, so the, the, the willpower, um, when we're making a willpower check, if we've lost points to willpower, um, do we make it with like those new points or is it going off of our will? You, you don't, you don't have to make a willpower. Oh, oh, wait. Oh. Oh, you're talking about like to cast a spell, right? Or what are you asking? Well, we we fled, correct? Mm hmm. We were oh. fleeing. Well, no, just just Orla, just Orla's running away. Oh, okay, out. okay, okay. All right, all right. So I see the specter in in front of me. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and your your elementalism magic is tied to your intelligence. So yeah, you don't have any sort of penalties to that. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. 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 No, I, I didn't know if I was fleeing also. I'm sorry. I no, we were all fleeing. no. Um, all right. So you're all scared. That's true. But you're not all fleeing like Orla is. Right. Right. Um, okay. Do I know with my knowledge if specters can be harmed by fire? Um, they can be harmed by physical things as you learned earlier, but Perhaps. All right, I'm gonna cast uh, fireball at a uh, one level. At at just the first level. Just first level for right now. All right. Cool. Please do it, or please attempt. All right. Uh, cast a nine versus fourteen. So roll damage. Success. 1d6. 2 damage. 2 damage. You can see this moat of fire leave your hands and hit the specter. <laughs> she says as it burns and singes sort of the side of her neck. <laughs> she starts trying to pat it out. Good job. Next up. And I'll, I'll end my turn. Yeah, okay, cool. Next up is the lady. Um, she is going to try to uh, do something again. Let me see what she does. War. Um... Cool. She is going to go over to... Oh, I'm having a moment here. 
Um, she's going to go over to who's the closest. Let's say Bastin. She's going to go over to Bastin, and she's going to ram her translucent hand into the chest of you. You feel this chill of death embrace your heart. You are going to take D12 of damage and become exhausted. That's four points of damage, and now you are also exhausted. So anything dealing with your agility is going to have a, a bane to it. Bastin. Yeah. Okay. And Exhausted. That's, that's the lady's turn. Next up, Macander. How did these banes reset, by the way? Um, you're, like a, yeah, you're going to need to uh, rest. It's a rest thing, okay. Like a short rest, yeah, which is let's, called a stretch rest. Let's uh, flint and tinder my torch to get it to, uh, to flame on as some might say, and uh, rush this ghost with a torch. Oh, cool. Awesome. I don't know what's going to happen. McAndrew doesn't know what's going to happen, but we're going to rush it with a torch. <laughs> cool. You're going to rush it with the torch. Um, give me, I'll, let's see, roll using your, you're like your, your short sword, which you would use for like a. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, no, blunt weapons. Roll for your blunt weapons. Hey, same, same, same. 14. Yeah. Gonna roll a 12 versus 14. That, that succeeds, please. Uh, give me... Um, I don't know what the damage would be. Yeah, for damage, use D10. D10? Did I roll that? I do. Okay, here we go. Three! Cool. Awesome. You singe the ghost who just reacts very negatively to your fire and, and, and yeah. winces in pain. Uh, cool. Orla. Running away. Yeah? Yeah. You want to get out I, of I, it? That's all I can do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's already a failure. It's a 12 and a 13. So, no. Dang. Awesome. Orla, again, just these images are being replayed and replayed and replayed and replayed and replayed in your mind. It's terrible. Bastin. Bastin, um, he's going to attempt to. Let's see. I'll do. I'll throw my. I'll throw my throwing spear at the ghost. Okay. Let's see what happens. Do I need to do the willpower roll for that? Um, no. You don't need a willpower roll. <laughs> I said no because of the whole like scared thing. Yeah. No. 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 That just means um anything you do dealing with. With will specifically, do okay. Whenever you make you. a willpower roll, anything tied to that, such as I see, I see. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, all right, the throwing spear, spears fourteen. That's a seven. Dope. So you throw your spear, it soars and connects and just goes straight through um, the lady who does not react in the slightest. I feel like I should have seen that one. Uh, <laughs> Aiden. Muted. You're muted. Aiden, no. Someone cast healing word on Hudson's microphone. <laughs> Can't hear you. Sorry, man. He can't hear us either. Oh, no. Hudson. Oh, no, Huddy. Oh, no. No, it's not muted. All right, so um, I've just been doing this the entire time. Yeah, All right, funny. so fuck you. Uh, Aiden's going to cast Fireball at... So if I cast it at third level... That six points. Six points. Yeah. All right, I'm going to cast it at... And, and if I fail on the cast... I thought that said nutted. It was an M? <laughs> if I if I fail on the cast, I'll lose those six points. <laughs> also, if it wasn't, it would yeah. be muted. Right. Yeah. Nuted? Muted. Neutered. With one D. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, ghost, the, the ghost the ghost neuters Bastion <laughs> as his attack. 
<laughs> All right, five versus 14, we hit. And here comes three D6s. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know why this is so funny to me. Uh, it'd be 12 uh, points of damage of fireball. Good night. You see this yeah. ghost engulfed 12? in flames. Like, you see it sort of, like, moving in and out of existence. It's, yo, you... Again, like it is at half the power that it once was when it started fighting you. I would say that, or maybe worse. Gazoon tight. Yeah. So with that gazoon tight, you see this thing. (laughs) (laughs) Next up is the lady once more. What's the lady gonna do this time? She is hurt bad. She does not have much left in her, so she's gonna try to give it all that she possibly has. Um. With a two, um, ah, it's going to do that again. Um, it's going to go over uh, to uh, Aodin, who just did all this massive damage. It's going to stick its hand into your chest and try to clench around your heart, making it cold. Four. Oh, I just threw my die across the room. Nice. That's icky. Eight damage to you. Um, is there a way I can dodge it? Um, yeah, you can try to dodge, yeah. Well, all right, so here's the thing. So if she's uh, trying to chill my heart, I, I do have an ability um, that says heat slash chill. Um, however, I cannot find that ability in the rule book. Yeah, it'll be on your character sheet. Like the, the page of your character sheet that has like the, the bearded man, it should be on there. Second page. Yeah, no, it, it, it's not. <laughs> it says heat slash chill and it's not there? Uh, correct, correct. Um, ba, 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 ba. it might just be, let's see. Is that a trick? Um, I it might really be a trick, don't. yeah. I, I think it's really a trick. I really don't know. I'm not seeing it in the tricks. I got puff, of, oh, here it is. All right, never mind. Um, the area within 10 meters of you becomes pleasantly warm or cold. So it is a trick. So I'm going to use one point of will, if I may, um, to uh, warm my heart. It is. Dis- it's not your turn. Come on, Stop. man. <laughs> so just eight points. Get it damage. together. Okay. Well, can you try and dodge it though? You said there was a dodge. You can try. Right? You can try to dodge it. Yeah, with mobility. Give me a mobility roll. Nah, I don't. So Dang. that's eight points of damage? Eight damage, yes. Damn. Ooh, Macander. Going for the torch again. Yep. Um, unless... I don't think I can do it in the same turn. What if Macander tried to heat his blade up with the torch? Could an attack happen on top of heating the blade? Um, you can try it. What two things would I try from a player's perspective? You can try holding it there. This is only about, this is like 10 seconds. Each little, each turn is 10 seconds. Okay, yeah, that wouldn't be long enough. Um... We've already engaged, so let's uh, let's attack with the torch again. We're going versus uh, four versus. Also, yeah, I also realize we haven't been rolling initiative each turn, but each uh, round, but that's part of the rules too. But this is our homebrew game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's easier to. It's quicker if you don't do that, I guess. Yeah. For fourteen or lower. I got a thirteen. Perfect. Is it still a D ten? Yeah. Okay. I got an eight. Dope. Again, these flames are burning. It. It's she's she is a lot more translucent than she once was. She is barely on our plane of existence at this point. Orla, can you break out of this? Probably not. I believe. Too bad. It's damn. At least one tw- off twelve and a fifteen. Ah. I'm still just. Running, I'm probably back to the entrance by now. 
there is that gate, so you're just kind of hanging on to the gate. That's the only thing sort of leaving you out of the way. Um, Bastion, in it, yeah, exactly. You like Eric Andre. Orla looks like Eric Andre at the moment. Bastion, yeah. is there anything else you'd like to do? Anything at all? You could try to take cover here. You could use some sort of ability if you wanted to. What are you thinking? Me still? Uh, Bastin. Oh, okay. Bastin. Uh, I lost my torch, remember, because I dropped it down the hole at the beginning, so I don't have um, my torch anymore. Uh, is the table that the sword was on made of wood? Yes. Well, Can I try to... Is it? I don't... <laughs> Oh, I'm asking. And it was an oak table when we first came in the room. Oak yes. Table. Yeah. Can I try to light the table yeah. on fire with my flint and tinder? Yeah. Definitely. 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 Give me a slide of hands. See how quickly we can get this going. Ah, shit. <laughs> slide of hands like or a. Or survival. Six. Survival. Survival's better. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> my survival's five. <laughs> Okay, so slide ahead. Show me the money. No money. It's an eleven. It does not happen. Bass is over here trying to light the table on fire. It's not happening. Oh, damn it, Freddy. <laughs> other shit's going on, especially with Aiden around. Aiden, this thing is you've been soloing this this mug. Well, not really. mccandrew has been helping, but you've been doing a ton of damage to this thing, almost single handedly. What do you want to do? Uh, we're going to cast Fireball for first level again. Uh, it's eight points versus 14, so yep. it hits. We're going to roll for damage. 1d6. Three points of damage. How do you want it to kill? How do you want to kill her? Yeah. Uh, yeah! Aiden says, uh, Gesundheit! <laughs> as uh, a, a huge <laughs> last flame ball a ball of flames uh comes out of his fingertips in a very slow-mo montage as it goes through the room seeing uh both the duck and baston's face kind of like going past them <laughs> and hitting the specter as it goes up and vanishes I, I like to imagine you sneezed it out too. Like you're like, <laughs> yes, that's where I draw my powers from my allergies. <laughs> so with the specter gone, you all turn to see Orla just desperately trying to fight for her life to get out of there. Freaking out. What do you do? We try to calm her down. Yeah. What, I mean, what do you say? Yeah, you can. We, we got rid of it. We got rid of it. It's gone. It's gone. Together, it's right gone. There. Not there anymore. I'll say I'll say that Orla can 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 slowly calm out of it now that okay, things, things so seem. I have to keep things, things seem safer at the moment. Okay. I just kind of like. You're all still very scared, but things seem to be a little safer. Yeah. And Bloodjaw has the sword now, correct? Mm hmm. All right. How about the door? Yeah. Yeah, you can go if you would like. You can go the through door. it. As Let's you go it. into this next door, you're in the middle of a burial chamber with torches on the walls, and there is a podium with an ornate sarcophagus made of stone. The floor, the ceiling, <laughs> the walls, they're all made of stone bricks. And there is this painting of a dragon seen on the far wall. You can see the stone coffin. It's been opened from the inside with tremendous force because there's pieces scattered all the way around. And inside is something. Well, you haven't seen that yet. What do you do? Hmm. I'm hanging towards the back. McCander is, I, I kind of regret saying it, but McCander has yet to take any, I mean, he, he's doing pretty good. Um, he's going to head towards, and now the coffin is the only thing in this room, the ornate coffin. Ornate coffin, yeah, on a podium, and there's just like a, a painting on the far wall. What is the painting of? 
dragon. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'll tell you this, Vassin. It's a dragon, and there is a knight on its back, mm. um, with like a big horned helmet. Think of like a think of like a dragoon from Final Fantasy. I love that. So okay, great. What uh, what's behind the painting? Nothing. It's just on the wall. Do I know that for a fact. I mean, if you went over there and touched it, yeah, it'd just be solid wall. Okay. All right. While they're looking around, can I take a stretch? Like a, yeah, it like. It says it's like 15 minutes. Yeah. I have yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. Oh, can we all do that? that? That would get rid of the scared, right? You all could. Yeah, you could choose to get rid of scared. Yeah. Okay, we'll do oh. that. We'll, we'll gather ourselves. Would I also get rid of the exhausted stat I have too that I got from the. You can choose one to get rid of. Um, but there are believe- exhausted. Yeah, I believe there are some abilities that will allow you to get rid of more than one, um, or something to get rid of more than one. So, so I would need to take two stretch rests to get rid of both, basically. You, yeah, or like a full or a shift, full rest. a shift rest, which is okay. I'll, I'll just I'll just get rid of exhausted. Yeah, let me see what if I can find out like how to heal more conditions. Age eighteen. Yeah, can I can I heal myself by? Healing. Um, let's 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 look at the healing uh, page <laughs> on uh, the quick start rules. That's on page uh, 18. 18. During a stretch rest, you recover 2d6 willpower points and heal a condition of your choice. There you go. Um, you also heal a d6 of HP or 2d6 HP, if someone else is tending to you and succeeds with a healing roll. I don't have any damage, so I could tend to a yeah. wizard friend. Yeah, the caregiver cannot rest during the same stretch and can, oh. o- and can only heal one person during the rest. I need to get rid of my exhausted, so... So yeah, so if you all want to take a D6 of HP, you can. Okay. But I'm only down one, so that'll heal me no matter what, so... Dope. Um, okay, can I also use, are there, okay, this is a wild thing, are there any, like, rats or any more bats or anything in these? I'll say there's little rats scurrying around. Cool. Um, I would like, if I may, just because I want to be able to use this, um, so I can activate, this is... Oh, you can use this ability to turn an animal that you encounter into your companion. Can I make a rat my companion? Yes. <laughs> it takes a stretch, and I can only have one active at a time. Yeah. But, cool. I have a rat now, so that's awesome. uh, three nice. three willpower points that I use. The rat looks awesome. up at you with these beady eyes. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, okay, okay. You're not what I expected to see down here. And I'm just like, like scratching him behind the ears. Like kind of put them up on my shoulder. <laughs> Y'all what? know if there's gonna be an animal, I'm gonna adopt it. What's the rat's name? Uh, Remy. I'm sorry, I hate myself. That's you had to do it. You had to do it. I had to. Mm-hmm. Cool. Now, yeah. So you're Da-da-da-da. in this open sarcophagus. Um, I'll tell you this: inside the sarcophagus, as you step forward and look inside, there is a gilded crown, and on the crown. It has runes written all the way around it. On the sarcophagus. On like physically on top of it. It's like inside. It's like sitting in the sarcophagus. Oh, so we've opened it. Okay. It was already open. It was open from the inside. Like something oh, bursted out of that thing, and now the crowns are in it. Okay. Delicioso. There tracks or anything? Wait, La Puerta. Dust has been disturbed. Uh, no, habla espanol. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and take no. a hard guess. No. This is where the Death Knight came from. Oh. There's no body or mummy or skeleton inside the. Nope. Just what was that name that kept getting repeated? Eladane. Is there any writing that says Eladane? Um, there's some writing and runes on the crown, but you don't know if that's what it means. You can give me a learning roll to see. Um, I'll, uh, may... I'll try to break it down too. Yeah. Um, learning. Yeah, Anybody wants a... to give learning a can? 
Um, would A know because he knows the language? Would he know if... You can do it and give me a boon. A. I rolled a 5 versus yeah. 10. I rolled Dope. a 6 versus 6. Dope. Dope. Uh, I rolled a 6 versus a 5. Uh, okay. That's tough. You got a 4 versus 14. Dope. Nice. Nice. Yeah, you all can sort of piece together what this is. It didn't say Elidane on it, um, on the crown. But yeah, Elidane is, is sort of inscribed on the wall, in part, um, next to the image of the dragon riding uh, knight with the horns. Beyond mm-hmm. that, what um, A would know from looking at the crown and the runes on it, it's basically saying that this crown is imbued with a spell, the spell runes. And I'll tell you mechanically, wearing this crown will half all damage attacks from demons. Automatically halves them. I got the sword, so not mine to call. Mikanda lacks a helmet. Uh... Oh, sure, yeah. Go go right ahead, Mikanda. It's okay. I'm not bleeding out or anything. Uh, great, that's all you had to say. <laughs> Wait, wait, I... Damn, are you Hudson, injured? you just got ducked. Are, are you injured, wizard? Uh, just a little bit. It's uh, quite the flesh wound, um, but it, it's just only a scratch. Can we take, a, like, a second stretch rest, and I can use that to try and patch him up, maybe? <laughs> but we can try healing, I imagine. I wouldn't get the rest out of it, but... I don't know how, how quickly you can have those together. Um, ooh, so, you could so try. There's no way I can just heal myself because I have that knowledge of healing because I'm a wizard. I have to take a stretch to heal myself. I believe so. So let's see, you're healing. Um, yeah, the healing skill. Yeah, that's to really like use on yourself or other people during those moments, I believe. Uh, yeah, lost HP is recovered by resting. And healing rolls um, can give an extra D6 when healing during those rests. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I imagine there'll be the healing, healing, full roll. healing spells added later. And some dangerous shit, yeah. So I have to do the healing roll while we're stretching. Yeah. Somebody else has to do it on you because you can't. I don't think you can self heal. You get 1D6, but then automatically, if right? Uses the healing ability on you they don't get to heal they don't get the benefits of the rest right. but you get and you have to succeed to the person has to succeed on yes. their role too right yeah yeah sorry yeah. i didn't mean to take over london i just no I no no there. yeah please <laughs> please yeah say it yeah so what do you want to do so healing is a much of an option so and <clears throat> we did Take this crown. Oh, no, 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 no. I, Please, I, I, I insist. No, no. Give Upon my honor. You. Please. You or, or, or like, you, you take it. I, I'll be fine. I mean, I don't, I try not to get hit. Um. Orla, when, when do wizards typically take such values? You always wear, wear the robes, wizard. Yes, I wish my wo- robes had, uh, my wobes. Had uh, magical abilities, but they don't. <laughs> exactly. So you should take this crown. My my wobes. Yes, I, I promise you, I'll be fine. Uh, one of you should take it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like it's a little cursed. I'm not too keen to put it on my own head. Uh, perhaps maybe. that's a good point. Perhaps maybe we should just destroy it. No, I could split it in half. And then you can eat for half. Let's not do it, Let's. I'm putting it on. I'm putting it on. Wait, you wait. You just you picked you you picked up to, to put it on yourself. Enough fighting. The kid is wearing wearing the crown. All right, cool. Um, yeah. So since you just grabbed it, um, what you're gonna <laughs> notice there's like 20 blades that shoot out from the sarcophagus yeah. in all ah. directions. You are all in there. Um, everybody, give me a mobility roll. Ah, I'm so glad I got rid of exhausted. Oh, oh, thank God. That's an Here average 14. 
Her Perhaps. ability is oh. 10. And I rolled a 17. Cool. Uh, I rolled a 16. I took damage. Dang. Okay. A? A dragon. Nice. Good right. night. Nice. The squishies aren't getting hit. Dragon's Dude, good, though. What does it look like when Orla and Archmaster A are dodging over these blades? Can I do, like, a cool-ass backflip? Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. And your rat's with you. Remy's with you. Yeah, he's just like holding on, just flopping around <laughs> <on> my shoulder. <laughs> ba Bastin was staring too intently at his new sword to yeah. notice the blades coming out of this the so coffin. Cool. <laughs> uh, this is so fucking cool, guys. Macander takes five points of damage. Uh, <clears throat> Bastin's gonna take eleven. Eleven? Yep. Two d six. I wrote it for each of you. Jesus. <laughs> Dude. I had 17 HP, now I have six. <laughs> You're better off than me. <laughs> That's really bad, Hudson. You, you, you didn't heal during the last one, Hudson? I got one. <laughs> oh, I, have, I have three points. <laughs> oh, you, oh, that hurt. Who's not making it out of this? Shit, 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 you shit. can try to take another stretch if you want. You can try. Ow! Or you can just... We're in the middle of combat. Well, no, the well, no there, there were just blades that kind of swung out. It was a trap. It was a trap. Oh, okay. It was attached to some sort of mechanism. When he picked it up, it triggered the blades. So do I? am I holding it now? You still got it, yeah. You guys just want to camp here tonight? Just stay here for uh, seven to nine hours? Uh, the you place can... where the death knight's wandering. You can rest or you can try to get the f get out. I say we get the fuck out of here. Oh, if we're doing that, I'm wearing this damn thing. Yeah, wear it. You deserve it after that. Fine. So... <laughs> yes, it's probably best that we get out of here quickly. I don't deserve it after all. Vend it. Oh, why shouldn't I keep it? Oh! So, so you you head out of the door south. You pass through past the table. There's the portcullis. You will now have the key you took from the goblin earlier. You're able to unlock it. It leads you back into the sort of first choice you had to make between east and west. You can see those, and you can see that domed chamber where the bats once were. As we're going, I want to listen to see if I can hear the death knight walking around, and make sure we're not just walking straight into it. Well, it's. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Please give me a um, scouting. Bastard, what's your, what's your HP? A nine versus Six or 17. 12. Okay. Dope. Yeah, you can hear heavy footsteps making their way around that, that central chamber where your rope still rests, Shit. snaking up its way to that light. It's in there. The Death Knight is in the chamber. Is my sword came glowing? In. No. No. Oh. oh, okay. Never mind. I want to let everyone else know very quietly that it's still in there. Um, if we're quick enough, we might can get out. Hmm. Before All right. it can get to us. All right. Yep. Okay. I'll let everyone else go first. <laughs> Can I attempt to, like, throw a stone to the far end of the chamber? <laughs> you can pick up a broken bottle. Oh, 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 okay. Um, What'd you expect me to do? Get a clicker. <laughs> get the clicker distracted. Um, okay, uh, what will that be? I don't know. Give me, str give me strength. You're throwing it. Okay, just straight strength. I gotta beat a 16. Yep. I got exactly a 16. Cool. That's and so y'all y'all are all booking it out of there? Well, I'm, I'm throwing it, and then I guess whoever wants to go first. Well, yeah, I guess we're just booking it. Yeah. You, you, you can attempt up? to book, to, to use mobility or use sneak. Um, the whole group has to decide and use the same one, but I will give you um, a boon to it, uh, to either one, My because of that. Five. My sneak is five. I have 14 in both. So. My mobility is 10. 
I feel like we're probably better at mobility as a group. Yeah, so uh, Orla has 14 in both sneaking and a, a mobility. I have 10 in mobility, but 5 in sneak. Um, is there a disadvantage if someone stays back and lays down cover fire while everybody else leaves? You can, if you want to stay back, you can. No rule required. Get the BAR on him! I mean, we're it's, already getting a boon because it's distracted. Yeah, it's distracted. Yeah. So you need a, is it mobility? You said mobility? I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we can try that. Sure, let's do it. All right. Mobility. Take the lower number. Okay. Take it. Roll Five twice, versus take 14. I got a 12. Uh oh. Three versus eight. Dope. I got a 12 and a, and a 19. I got it. I got a 12, which I needed, and I needed a 12. I needed a 10, and I got 12 as the lowest. Aiden, so. Orla, and Bastin. Y'all are all hauling ass up that rope <laughs> out of the skylight. And down in the chamber is a duck and a death knight. <laughs> you see this I'll huge... Use one of my yeah. yeah. I want my rat to jump off of my shoulder and attack the death knight. <laughs> it's three willpower points, but I can command it to attack as a free action. I if nothing that... else, it'll buy some time for Macander to get away. <laughs> please please do that. Yeah, please the do that. The boot is cool. twice the size of that rat. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> but the rat just lands on its head and, like, Ratatouille style is trying to pull it around the room oh, or something. Okay. Au, au revoir, Remy. Well, here's what yeah, happens. Yeah, brave sacrifice. <laughs> Remy drops down and he has his horn great helm. But the visor is open. All you can see is a grim skeleton face Macander with these big, like, open eye sockets, empty. You're looking at that. But all you see is this sort of blur. It's kind of co down. <laughs> <laughs> and then up <laughs> the face into the eye socket goes this rat. <laughs> you see, it just starts like. It grasped its face. It's like thrashing around. <laughs> I'm gonna give you one more mobility roll, McCander. All right, no boon. Let's see what happens. Thank you for your sacrifice. Rest okay, in peace, I, Rip my Remy. My mobility is a ten, so we I'm hardly need that. I'm gonna Can we get Rip Remy's in the chat? Roll a seven. <laughs> Raccoonie. <laughs> roll a seven. Nice. Oh, don't, see it. don't. Yeah, man. Dude, McCander of Half Bay is hauling ass up the rope. <laughs> Shh. You get to the top. You're on top of that mound again. You can see that uh, that that stone thing on the side. Are you dragging that back over? Or what are what you doing? What time of day is it? It's, it? it's been a little while. You've been in there for quite a while. The sun will be going down very soon. But I take my knife and I just cut the rope, by the mm -hmm. way. As soon as he's up. Can I look like, down? I'm not bothering un untying it. I'm just cutting it. <laughs> I don't cool. know if anyone else wants to close it, but I, I'm, I'm interested to see what it does. Is the Death Knight still just, is, is it still bound there? Like, yeah, you can just hear sort of the clanking of metal and like the stumbling around of, of Remy <laughs> defending <laughs> his friend. A day. <laughs> True hero. <laughs> I knew it would come in handy. I knew it. <laughs> so his stone tablet. He was from Quebec the whole time. Yeah, we're gonna... away the death knife. You came to the Misty Vale for treasure. You got a legendary sword. You got this sort of demon crown. You got a new friend in... A new friend and companion that helped save your lives. And you got to blast some fireballs at a ghost. This has been an eventful entryway into the Misty Vale. Mm. But more adventures await for this party. More treasures to be found. More mysteries to uncover. More dungeons to delve into. In this new land, what destiny does Archmaster A foresee for himself?
Um, well, he, he's going to head back to his uh, cottage uh, near the village and, uh, you know, smoke on some of that uh, South Farming that he's been <laughs> really dying to get a hold of uh, the past couple of hours since they've been down there. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. What nice. destiny does Orla Moonsilver see for herself in this new land, the Misty Vale? She's still trying to find it. Um, so she just is, she just continues journeying wherever she can, just trying to figure out what that destiny might be. She's, she's kind of going with the flow for now. Lucky for you, you got some wonderful companions with you, including Bastin Bloodjaw. What destiny do you foresee for yourself, Bastin? Bastin, um, while very happy to make it out alive, is still slightly disappointed because deep down, he would have liked to have fought that death knight, but he also knows he wasn't in the best shape to do so at the time. But Bastin, he'll keep searching out strong opponents. He'll keep trying to improve his own skills. And he's always on the lookout for the next challenge. The next challenge. Macander of Half Bay, now Macander of the Misty Vale. What destiny do you for you see for yourself? Okay. Walks out into uh, towards the horizon. Yeah. Just walks out. Uh, he, oh, that was yeah. a bit. That wasn't you just, okay. That was, uh, no, he says to treasure <laughs> and he takes off and that is the goal. Hopefully finding more, uh, more um, challenges to honor his, uh, his mallard name. One year. Of half day. One year later in a mm. busy, bustling marketplace. You start to hear screams, commotion. As you all turn, you see this figure, this helmed figure, clinking and clanking <laughs> as it walks towards you. People are screaming, people are moving out of the way, guards are even backing up as they see this skeletal faced figure covered in dirt and muck and mud move towards you. You all see the Death Knight approach you. But as it gets closer and closer, it doesn't raise a weapon. With its blank stare, it just goes down on one knee and bows. The helm falls off and heavily top topples along the ground. And sticking out of this hole in the top of the skull, you see Remy that just goes... <laughs> That's the game. <laughs> That's the game, everybody. Oh Thank gosh. you for playing um, Dragon Ball. Remy! <laughs> <laughs> it took him a year, but he got out. He did so good. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> oh, what did he eat? Game. What was he eating? Brain. Let him oh, cook. Yep. What was he eating? <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Protein. I really wish I had picked a different name if I knew he was going to be the hero of the whole session. <laughs> He did what Remy in the movie did, though. He took control of a he body. Did, he did. Yeah. <laughs> there must always be a rat king, says <laughs> Ian. Well, thank you all for playing with me. I hope you had fun. This is a new game, oh, new yeah, system. Yeah. I'm sure the, the game, once it comes out, will be even different from this. I think the character sheet in the beta PDF is different from the one we're playing with even. So, But, yeah, but I had fun with, with you all. Um, is there anything anybody would like to plug or anything at all? Uh, if no one else is going to speak up, I'm going to plug myself for the first time on Spot Hidden uh, to go tune in to <laughs> Granola Clusters. Um, I just play games, man. That's what I do. I saturate the gaming Twitch market like every other person. So come tune in. Yes, he does. He does. But, sure. but, but Matt does enjoy the games that he's playing. And, and he does have a good time, and it's fun to watch him. So I, go and tune into Granola Cluster. I always tune time. in, yeah, too. Granola's, oh, I appreciate like, you all. It's like I'll often be like, Matt, are you streaming? Like, I'll get on Twitch just to see if Matt's streaming. And I'll text him sure. sometimes, like, yo, stream, I'm bored. I've gotten that text. And that text has motivated me to yeah. stream. So thank you for that. Of course. Um, other than that, stay tuned for Spot Hidden as well. Yes, as we yes. continue. Yes. Um. Yeah, anything else? Um. No, I don't think so. But yeah, again, follow us on YouTube. Follow us here on Twitch. 
follow us wherever you find us on Twitter. Um, we like playing games, and yeah, we like. Oh, doing there this, is yeah. one thing. Um, stay tuned, February 9th. Perhaps see a group of gentlemen and attorney. Perhaps see an attorney a sword pulled from a stone. That's all I'm going to give you. Mm. Oh, uh, no. if we're doing if we're doing teasers, I'll do a teaser. Um, keep more and wild on your mind. That's all I'll say. Um, if we're all doing teasers, Carly, do you have a teaser? Yeah, I don't know what it's gonna be, but um, there, there might be goblins in my future. Over Ooh, the initiative oh. order. So <laughs> very nice, very nice. Shout out to the initiative order. I dropped something. Yeah. Yes. Um, initiative yeah. order and Carly, and then. Uh, Mornwild and Price, and a little bit of, uh, I believe that story is referencing Tarzan and Hudson. And, and, um, I'll leave you with this, with a question. Who is John Galt? Oh.